greenhouse chemistry. Here we've got some copper sulphate from an online chemical supplier. If we read the hazard warnings it says it causes skin irritation, is toxic if swallowed and is very toxic to aquatic life. So we need to be careful with it. Uh, if it comes in contact with the skin we need to wash our hands immediately. Uh, if we look at the copper sulphate it's got this kind of greeny tint to it and that is not the colour we're expected to see for copper sulphate. Here we've got some purified material and hopefully you can see difference in shade. This one is very blue, this one is slightly green. So we need to recrystallize our copper sulphate from the supplier here to increase the level of purity and get rid of the impurities that seem to be colouring uh, it there. In order to do that what we need to do is we need to dissolve it in solution and we can do that in the bowl here although it's not the ideal piece of apparatus so if we pour about 50 grams or so half of what we got there perhaps into the, the bowl we can then dissolve that in very hot water which uh, I've got here in the jug so this is very hot water and we'll just add some to the copper sulphate and maybe you can see already we've got this this scum emerged around the edge here which was contaminating the material so very very quickly we can see why or that there were impurities. Um, not only that, sorry for the camera movement there, not only that there's a strong smell of, of sulphide coming off um, which is interesting um, and again is indicative of impure material. Well, I'm just going to put the camera back onto the stand and uh, concentrate on dissolving the copper sulphate here. probably need a little bit uh, more of the hot water my water's in fact cooled down a little you should uh, probably use this near to boiling water or in fact you can boil or heat too close to boiling to increase the solubility and make the copper sulphate dissolve faster. Attempting to add, uh, attempted to add a little more water to speed up the process, um, which will affect the evaporation later. We need to evaporate more water off, but that's okay. almost all dissolved now and you can probably see these impurities here you can lift them out on the spoon in fact there and so we did have quite a bit of contaminating material in the solid supplied by the supplier 
So there we are. Just uh, breaking up one surprisingly large crystal in the bottom there. That's now dissolved. So we've got a copper sulfate solution and we need to separate the dissolved material from the insoluble contaminants and we do that of course using filtration. So let's uh, just remove the pure material. And in order to do that then we're going to filter and we filter into a receiving vessel for the solution. I've got a jar here. We need a funnel and I'll be using a coffee filter. So there's the solution and we need to pour that carefully into the filter. As long as it all goes into the filter we're fine. And you can see, that's filtering quite quickly actually, uh, you can see impurities left in the bowl here. So that's going to take a few minutes to filter. We'll turn off the video and come back in a few minutes. So we, here we've got our copper sulfate which is finished filtering. We now need to move on to the evaporation stage. So let's remove the bowl used before for dissolving. And we can use a clean bowl to serve as an evaporating basin. So what we're going to do is to pour the filtrate which is a copper sulfate solution into the evaporating basin and allow the copper sulfate crystals to evaporate with time. You can see clean solution at the start. We'll come back and have a look what that looks like a little later. Here are the crystals of copper sulphate after the solution has been left to crystallize overnight. I did seed and that's by adding a small crystal in here to see if we could get a larger one and we have in fact got that. What we now need to do is to filter the mixture so that we can get the solid crystals out. So let's just rearrange things a little. Here's the funnel. Here's the filter paper. We can keep the filtrate in this case and crystallize some more copper sulfate but the idea is to get some good crystals out the first batch. So in goes the solution and here come the, the crystals. splint not the ideal piece of apparatus to get the crystals to come out but it will suffice. Ok 
okay we can probably recover some more crystals from there with time um, once more we'll take some deionized water in this reused soap dispenser and wash the crystals and wait for them to finish their filtration. That's the recrystallization of copper sulfate. We've got a lot purer material there. We've got rid of the impurities. I've got some nice blue crystals. We'll have a look at those again once that's finished filtering. So here are the filtered crystals of copper sulfate. Let's uh, get them out of the filter paper and compare them to the crude material that we started with. So let's just put a, a brick in there. You can put the crystals, which are still damp, onto the tile here. Out they come. They're not dry. And we in fact can recover a lot more material from the filter paper and the bowl later if we need to. Anyway, here they come. Here's the bulk. And we just leave that in there. As I say, there is one large crystal in here that I seeded yesterday. And it's uh, covered in smaller crystals, so it's not easy to see the shape. But I uh, could wash that. Let's give that a quick rinse in a while. I mean, here's the original material. Um, quite different in colour. So this is the purified material on the right, nice bright blue copper sulphate. And here's the greenish starting material from the supplier. So that's a recrystallization and purification of copper 2 sulphate.